Good morning, everybody. My name is Carly, and I am the president of the Junior League of Washington. And the Junior League is an organization of women who focus on improving our community and developing the potential of women. This is our 107th, that's a really long time, year of service working in DC. And for the past 20 years, we've focused on literacy. Why? Because we, like you guys, all really, really love books. So we are so excited to partner with the Library of Congress and have done so for 17 years at the National Book Festival. That's over 6,500 volunteers and 42,000 hours of working at the book festival, which is a ton and ton of fun. So we hope that you guys have a wonderful day today. It is the best party for a lot of book lovers like me and like you. So let's give you some time to talk and hear from your favorite authors like this morning and have a great, wonderful day at the festival. Good morning. Welcome again to the National Book Festival. I'm Christina Barron. I'm the Kids Post editor at the Washington Post, which is one of the charter sponsors of this event. I'm here to introduce John Sheska and Steven Weinberg, who have collaborated on a book called, yes, give them a round right now. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yay. More, bigger, bigger, really, yeah. yeah, woo. Oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> They've collaborated on a book called Astronauts, Mission One, The Plant Planet. That's a mouthful. Um, in addition to sharing the credit for this new book, they also share a few relatives. You might want to ask them about that. Today is a homecoming for Stephen. He grew up in Washington and Bethesda. As a kid, he loved drawing and reading the comics in the Washington Post. Stephen has written and illustrated several children's books, including Fred and the Lumberjack, an early reader story about a friendship between a beaver and a lumberjack. And You Must Be This Tall, about friends who want to ride a roller coaster, but one is just too short. John has written a few things you might know. He started out by turning a fairy tale on its head in the true story of the three little pigs. That was 30 years ago. Yes, oh, clap yeah, for that nice one. Job. That was a good one. Ago. Wow. It, it was 30 years ago. A little while later came the Stinky Cheese Man and other fairly stupid tales. Yes, you know that one. Which won the Caldecott honor, by the way. But then John really got going after that. He wrote the Time Warp Trio series, 16 books about three time traveling boys, and Truck Town, 13 early reader and picture books on which he brought trucks to life. More recently, a kid genius was at the center of six Frank Einstein books. Yeah, you know those. And I could go on. Instead, I will mention that John is making his fifth appearance at the National Book Festival. He first came in 2008, the year he was named the very first National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. But today, he and Stephen are here to talk about astronauts, the story of four superpowered animals who are part of a secret space program. Their job is to find a Goldilocks planet. That's an uninhabited planet that would be just right for humans to live on. In Plant Planet, they explore a green planet that at first seems like a good fit. At second glance, not so much. The book has lots of humor and colorful illustrations, but there's also real science about what's happening to our planet. Two more astronauts' books are in the pipeline, but let's hear what John and Stephen have to say about this one. And don't forget that they're going to be signing books at 10.30 over in that area. So please give a warm welcome to John Sheska and Stephen Weinberg. Thanks so much. Thank wow, thanks, you guys. Yeah. Uh, we've run out of time. Uh, we're just yeah. going <laughs> to... <laughs> I was going to draw some stuff. No, but we, we have no to go. time for that, Stephen. I'm going to go back to Bethesda. Everybody just has to know how to pronounce <laughs> Sheska. That's all you have to learn today. Everyone scream Sheska. Sheska. Weinberg. 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 Oh, that's too easy. Let's say it together Sheska Weinberg. Sheska. Now say. <laughs> oh, that's that sounds about the same to me. Okay, now we're really <laughs> done. Well, so Stephen and I know each other because Stephen and my daughter Casey are married. It's true. Um, so that 
what are son-in-law, father-in-law? Yeah, it's a normal relationship in uh, book publishing, <laughs> <Yeah>. I guess. <laughs> but, so Stephen does all kinds of great artwork. I, my artwork's not so great, so it's nice that we're together. So what we thought we would do is show you guys an inside peek on how that happens. Don't yeah. tell anyone else. Nope, this stays within this kind of a room. Yep. Within this pretty large room, actually. It's a really big room. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anyone. That guy with the camera, it's just a fake camera. Don't even look at him. Yeah. Um, no. But what, oh, what should we show people? Uh, probably this book. Oh, let's show them a new brand book. New That's book. a great idea. It's called Astronauts. So everyone scream, Astronauts. Astronauts! See, even it's louder. Kind of like no. astronauts. But it's missing a letter, so it came out astronauts. Yeah, they had a mistake back at NASA. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a typos happen. Yeah, typos happen. <laughs> so um, I, we'll just show you the book because no one else has seen this thing yet. It's not even out yet. Yeah, it's not even out officially until later this month. But you guys, there it is in 3D. Ooh. Oh, you can help with the countdown. You know how this works, right? Five, four, three. Two, one, blast off! And this is where the secret super-powered animals blast off from their secret NASA lab in Mount Rushmore. Does that look familiar? I bet you guys didn't know that they're in Thomas Jefferson's nose is actually a rocket. It's a spaceship. Yeah. So the guys zoom off. They're looking for a Goldilocks planet, like you heard, because things are getting kind of bad on Earth. You know that, right? Like yeah. things are getting weird. The water's not looking great. Things are heating up. Um, unfortunately, the astronauts themselves haven't really been tested yet. This is their first trip, and they don't even know about seat belts yet. No. That's why they're all screaming, <laughs> ah! And the whole book is told by Earth, because Earth is not too happy that all the humans on her have been messing her up. Yeah, it's getting kind of warm. That little red line there that Stephen drew going over Earth, uh, that's all the carbon that's in the, oh no, that's the temperature of Earth. It's going up, up, up. <laughs> Here's the fun part though, every astronaut has a superpower. Yeah, this is Laser Shark, and I, I'll draw you Laser Shark, but it's pretty fun because I actually drew half of her and the other half is a bunch of really old engravings that I've just been collaging, put together, John. You won't believe it. I thought you drew all this, Stephen. No, I can't draw that many lines. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of lines. <laughs> yeah, and we'll show you later that Stephen used artwork from a museum that gave him permission. Yes, He said you can use of all of our artwork and just make it your own. So that's what Stephen did with like the googly eyes and the teeth on the shark. I think I might be an artist. You can totally do it. It's just two big eyes. Oh, show us how it's done, Stephen. Just like that. She's usually looking up. Oh, here, I'll go back to laser shark. Wow. And you just kind of add some teeth here. Who does drawing here? Is anyone working on drawing stuff? Oh, great. Nice. It's a good career. Because Stephen oh, gets thanks. like half the money from the book. Actually, they, it was very nice. They gave me half. Yeah, I was thinking I it would be like a third or a quarter. John's <laughs> yeah. very generous. Yeah, I just thought Steven <laughs> should have that. Oh, and here's our other favorite character, Stinkbug. Oh. So Stinkbug's superpower is he smells really bad. He leaks methane gas. Do you guys know what methane smells like? Actually, yeah, <laughs> someone yelled it out. You guys know exactly. No, but really, methane doesn't smell. They add that smell to make it bad. <laughs> but more, more on that later. We'll get back to that. <laughs> it plays a very science. important role. <laughs> so these guys go to the plant planet, but Alpha Wolf, the leader, grabs the controls, and guess what happens? Yeah, they crash, crash right land in. on a planet. And here's where illustrators get lazy. They just make everything black. I tried to make the whole book take place in the dark. <laughs> But no one likes it. It's very said, expensive, all the black No, ink. Steven. <laughs> yeah, we won't even go into the printout. But they get stuck because the nose rocket controls jam. But you know there's always a way to get out of a nose rocket, right? How would you escape a nose? Yeah. Snot rocket. Snot rocket. Exactly. <laughs> so they snot rocket out of the nose, and they go look around the planet. So here's Alpha Wolf. He's looking for intelligent life. He can't find any. He thinks, he thinks it's, it's all, all him. him yeah. yeah. Here's Stinkbug. 
He's helping with shelter, because that's a thing Earthlings will need if they move planets. You draw some nice tulips also, Stephen. I can do tulips too. This is another thing Stephen took from the Dutch Museum. Yeah. Not surprising. I drew a very tulips, small right? amount for this book. A lot of the eyes and the hands. And then here's Ooh, Laser Shark. Eyes. She's looking for food. And Smart Hawk looks for the atmosphere. Yeah. But Ooh, the plants are not too thrilled. And every book, we're really excited about this, oh, sure, this has, one. I mean, there's it's fights. Feminine. It's pretty exciting. And we convinced our publisher to let us not just have a, a normal fight when they get in a tussle with the plants, but a giant it is a deluxe four-color fold-out fold fight. fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's worth a round of applause. Thank you. That's just Stephen going bonkers. It took me a long time to write this page. <laughs> it's like a lot of words hidden in. No, yeah. there's no words. But, so here's the real science. When you shake up stink bug, he develops more and more methane. Methane turns out to be very explosive. It's if very dangerous. If you put it near a spark like laser shark might make. And that's what happens. Lots of methane meets laser shark spark. Boom. Uh, so they leave that planet. <laughs> <laughs> Things didn't work out so good. Uh, and here's how Stephen came up with the artwork. Yeah, so all the artwork in here, um, I worked with the museum in uh, Amsterdam, the Rijksmuseum. They opened up their entire archives. And they said, any artist can do whatever they want with them. So you can see in the back of the book, we get to include a little bit of this where a character like Laser Shark comes from these old engravings. You can even see that shark there. See him up in the corner? Yeah. And we tried to collaborate in all kinds of things. When John and I made this book, you can go to the next one. Oh, yeah. We shared my giant studio. And that's how I type all the that's time. That's how John like that. types. <laughs> We'd go page by page. So you can keep on going. Yeah. The, oh, that's oh, just John's head on the computer. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's Amina. <laughs> that's our helper. That's Stephen's two-year-old daughter, Amina. <laughs> She's our reader. Oh, oh yeah, there it and is. And here's, here's the museum, but here's what Steven's studio looks like when all the pages were wrapping around. Yeah, Right, it's so many pages, because every page, John and I will look at what's happening, and I'll say, oh, I want to draw a giant Venus flytrap and a lot of flowers and a crazy moon. And John's like, I want to write so much. I love writing. I'm like, can you write a little bit less? <laughs> so we had lots of pictures. And here's the museum that gave Stephen all this artwork. And it's really fun how I get to work. Do you guys ever do collage? Yeah, yep. so I took all these old drawings by people a long time ago. So you see this wolf in the bottom right? That's Alpha That's Wolf. That's Alpha Wolf. So I chopped them up, recolored, and then I could do his fun googly eyes. I just do this part. It's a lot easier. And he's got a little mouth and two teeth and some whiskers. There's no room for whiskers. And then Steven in the back has cut out the pieces so you can make your own characters doing astronaut adventures. Yeah, so all these guys come from old drawings. The next one is, yeah, so that's La uh, Smart Hawk and Laser Shark and Stink Bug. Oh, there's Stink Bug up in the corner. Yeah everything in the book. So now this stuff looks familiar, right? Well, here, let's, let's stop here and get yeah. some questions from people. Anybody have questions, comments, how much you love the book? Yeah, oh, I got you one yes. on the couch. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, you can even use the microphone if you want. This is deluxe. This is like the presidential debates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting all tied up. <laughs> oh boy. A billion. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Any other Astro fans? Oh, you can use the microphone over there, over here. Yes, yeah. big people are encouraged to ask questions. Any questions about Good morning. Inter How are you? Good. Good morning. My um, students love math curse and science verse, and they asked me to ask you if you're going to make a social studies one. <laughs> I will think about making a social studies one. This is kind of a social studies yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> we do a lot of social science in here. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. We love all this stuff. And this has a great teacher's guide to go with it, astronauts. Yeah. Because we love the way teachers have been using the books. Thank you. Oh, thanks. <gasps> what's your favorite book? Stephen, what's your favorite book? Uh, I really like Alexander 
and the horrible or the terrible. No good. Very bad, bad day. Horrible day. I grew up with that book. I was the middle child. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A lot of days like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Go Dog Go. I think that's one of the craziest <laughs> books ever. <laughs> oh wait, here's one over here, yeah. Are you gonna make more Frank Einstein books? Uh, more Frank Einstein books? Maybe. Cause number six was the multiverse. I don't know where to go next. We could do a little Jetsons Flintstones thing. Oh, Bring maybe they could meet the astronauts. together in the multiverse. Or though somebody did tell me we could make a book seven called The Void. <laughs> it should be great. There'd be nothing in it. <laughs> just, just the cover, right? Would you buy that book? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's All right. Okay. Good answer. I'll think about that. <laughs> yes. How did the nose even blast off if it fell down? Into Excellent the question. How Ooh. did the nose even blast off? Well, it looks like it's made out of stone. Yeah. And it blends in but it's actually a high polycarbonate. Uh, very powerful thrusters in each nostril. Yeah, yeah. and the rockets are kind of like right up there. You, you have to access them. Like. There's sometimes you have I have to them. pick in those uh, rocket ports. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? We should probably get into the science of that because you don't look convinced. Yeah. <laughs> do you have, you have rocket experience? Have, do you make rockets or anything? Oh, thinking about making rockets? You look like a rocket right. guy. Nice. <laughs> Maybe you could help us design another nose rocket. Yeah, because the nose is kind of aerodynamic. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> More than an ear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, come on, people on this side, you slackers. Get up to the microphone there. <laughs> oh, wait, you can oh, ask yeah. your question. Yeah. Oh, That's he's just okay. a stinky cheese fan. Can you hold up your book just to show people? Because I'm glad you brought that. Ooh. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. A Time Warp Trio fan. Excellent. Nice. Do you have one favorite? The Good, the Bad, and the Goofy. Also one of my favorite. Oh, we got a question. Oh, nice. Yes. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Uh, how long did it take you to? Finish the book from start from start to finish. How long did you collaborate together? Wow. Ooh. You know what? From our original idea was like four years ago. Really? Stephen was... and I thought we should make a book really fast, and it would be crazy and fun. Like a few pages, not. It turned into a really different thing. Two hundred pages. Probably almost a year, right? From like outline to then going back and forth. Yeah, it's a bunch of steps. We start with an outline, and then do every single page in the book. We'll do kind of like a dummy version, where I just draw really quickly. And then those get refined over yeah. a couple of versions. And, and then, then just... Stephen locks himself away to do the color <laughs> version. Yeah, and we don't see him often for big stretches of the day. Three months of just being in my studio and John knocks on the door and I'm like, leave me food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on this side. Can I draw you guys something? I can do yeah, that. Yeah, draw something. What do we have, like two minutes left? Yes, draw we the have Titanic? two minutes left, Stephen. Make something really nice. Someone said draw the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that okay. should be easy. Oh, wait, we have, yeah, one more question. Keep drawing, Stephen. You can keep drawing while you answer this question. So now I'm kind of fascinated with the idea of taking old art and whacking yes. it all up and putting yes. it back together and adding my own little bits and pieces. Yeah. Did you do that on computer? How would you say these kids could maybe experiment with that kind of art, multimedia oh. at home? Uh. Yeah, that's a great question. So I show you guys in the back of the book a little bit of how this works. Um, and I also have here, we have a website with the book, astronuts.space. And on it, I made all these little printouts. So they're just eight and a half by 11, and it's all the bits from the characters where you can print it out, you can cut them out, and kind of collage it all together yourselves. Yeah, so those two things, probably go to astronauts.space, and then you get to download all that stuff. And then go to the Rijksmuseum, or just yeah. look up Dutch National Museum, and you can look at all that artwork. So I have all of the artwork we used in the book. You can skip ahead. I have a couple slides of just all of that. It's crazy. I think I used oh, yeah. about so here's 300 images for this book. And there's just more and, look at that and crazy more stuff. and more that I have in this giant set you can look through. We need to do a, a whole planet with mustaches, I think. Actually, that guy, Anthony Van Dyke, that's my author picture. 
<laughs> oh, that's why that looks familiar. <laughs> uh, Titanic, back to work. Yeah, go ahead. You can ask your question while Steven's Why did you decide for the rocket to be a nose? Um, we thought it, like the nose rocket was just the funniest name. <laughs> we were trying to think of other rocket names. And then I was looking at a picture of Mount Rushmore where their secret laboratory is, and I thought, that would be funny just to say nose rocket. So over and over in the book, we keep talking about the nose rocket. And don't tell anybody else, but one of the other noses turns into a rocket in book three. So you guys will have a sneak, sneak peek. Are you working on writing books yourself? Yeah, we do, we, we do um, projects in um, our school where yep. we make, we, our teachers give this assignment to us where we have to make like, a few years ago when I was in first grade, we made yep. an animal book. Oh, perfect. This is kind of the same thing Stephen does. Yeah. And then you can just call everything a nose rocket. That's the secret <laughs> of being a writer. Or put stinky in and wherever you want. <laughs> and here's my cover, yes. Well, thank you so much, you guys. And we would like to thank the Library of Congress who yeah. made all this possible. Thank you guys so much. All these sponsors, it's kind of great. And then for the rest of today, you can see authors who aren't as good as us. But, well, you know. Yeah, you guys have woken be up. Be nice and to them, I don't okay? Know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, you think? Yeah, Stephen, the Titanic did not get sunk by He's a whale. He's not going to sink it. <laughs> good historical point. <laughs> You Could guys be like know. an iceberg ice horn. <laughs> you guys, have you guys didn't hear the whole story. Good book the whale ideas. was pulling the iceberg. Oh, mm. little known historical fact. All right, thank you guys. <laughs>